Like always, you're seeing me fooling around with my phone, trying to see if I can get connected here. Theoretically, I'm running, so I'll cut out all this early stuff. So I don't expect anybody to show up on my Sunday Night Lives when you only got as many subscriptions as I do. It's highly unlikely. I'm just fooling around in my garage today or my workshop today, cleaning up a little bit and refurbishing my... Uh, workbench with some boiled linseed oil and uh, I noticed my first tip of the day and this will just, be just three tips Sunday my first tip was I noticed I had a lot of sawdust in my pockets of my apron and that was from uh, obviously using a router to cut all these dovetail grooves in my uh, pop-up workbench that I'm working on so I went to use my vacuum cleaner to get that sawdust out of there. You know, obviously you can take everything out and then dump it, but I didn't want to take everything out. So, but I ended up taking most everything out anyway, so I probably should just take it off and dump it. But anyway, what happens when you turn on the vacuum uh, shop vac and then try to stick it in the pocket is it grabs a hold of the material and stops and you can't even get down to the bottom of the pocket where the sawdust is. Let me demonstrate. So no matter how I try to separate that pocket and get that down in there, uh, it just won't go. It just keeps catching. I think, well, this is stupid. I really don't want to take all this stuff out. I ought to be able to get down in that pocket. And then I thought, well, you dummy. <laughs> Why don't you stick it in the pocket and then turn it on? Oh! Anyway, that's my first tip. You want to vacuum out your uh, shop apron pockets, turn off the vacuum, stick it in the pocket, turn it on. That way it won't get all hung up trying to get in there. All right, second tip of the day. I have a um, 30 by 48 inch top that goes on top of a pair of sawhorses and I've cut all these dovetail grooves in it. And what I don't know is if that top if the plywood that I had was already bowed or if the fact that I cut those grooves and then well I laminated two tops together I had a three-quarter inch Baltic birch plywood laminated to a half inch Baltic birch plywood and so I put a lot of glue in there uh, and the glue of course has moisture and then I didn't, I clamped them together around the edges, but I didn't really put a call on it of any kind. And now it looks like a trampoline or it looks like a uh, hammock. It's really uh, down. And I don't know if that's from cutting all the grooves and then that allowed, where I have more grooves on the top, that allowed it to kind of release and then cup up. So as I'm putting it on the sawhorses, which are straight, I thought, well, I'll just clamp it down and I'll just force it down and that'll straighten it out but it wouldn't straighten it out all the way so here's my little tip uh, as you're trying to do that if you have that application or if you've got anything where you're trying to clamp something down and straighten it out it, you need a shim of some sort so I just put a little shim in the middle and here's my tip you can buy these on Amazon they're tongue depressors really uh, and you can buy hundreds of them for very little money and they come in for all sorts of things you can use them to smooth out glue you can use them as little shims so what I did here was I put one on top of each sawhorse in the middle and then when I pulled that down further and then checked it with my level uh, I could not get my feeler gauge underneath anywhere on this level and uh, this isn't necessarily a perfect level. I've got one on the wall. I'm not going to take the effort to go get that. Uh, well, maybe I will. Get all hung up here with my uh, lavalier. So here's a level. Can't, you can't count on uh, this. These bubbles will tell you whether you're level or not, but they're not necessarily a straight edge. So 
I do not see any light coming underneath this nice certifiably straight bar that I got off of Amazon. All right, so that's the second tip. Buy yourself a whole bunch of tongue depressors. You can even check your kids to see if they got uh, the flu or tonsillitis. All right, third thing. I did a video recently where I talked about drilling these dog holes. And in doing that, I said it's a good idea to use a wood owl uh, drill bit. Problem is that this wood owl has a 7 16 shank on it and that won't go in my regular battery operated even Milwaukee uh, tools. They'll only go up to about 5 16 So uh, they wouldn't fit. As a result, and I wanted one anyway, and I had an application for this earlier, I bought a corded drill. But I was wondering, well, people that might buy my plans for what I'm doing uh, don't necessarily want to buy a bit that then forces them to buy a big heavy duty corded drill. So is there an option? So I thought, well, maybe uh, maybe they could use speed bores. Uh, so these are Irwin speed bores. They're tri-fluted, uh, what do they call them? They are Irwin speed bores. They are tri-flute bit set. I thought, well, that'll work because that only needs a quarter inch uh, shank there. So I can put that into my battery operated drill and uh, see if we got it straight. And that should work. And the idea was to have something that had this little uh, screw on the end so that it would pull itself down and in. So I had my old jig here that I was using to drill straight holes. So I thought, well, let's see if people can get by with a hand drill. And you guys probably know all of this stuff, but I'm still at the point of learning many things. And so um, I thought, well, surely that will work. So I gave it a try. All right, what's going on? Too much torque, I guess. It just won't handle that. So that didn't work in my Milwaukee. This is just a little uh, M12. Yeah, M M12 battery. So it's not the biggest one ever. It, I, I knew this was a dumb idea. I thought, well, if that won't work, how about my impact driver? Or, and so I said, well, that'll go in there, but I know I don't usually use this for drilling, and I can break things with this, and will that work? And I put it in there, and yeah, it would uh, it would go a little bit better, make a lot of noise, and uh, probably eventually drill through there, but that didn't seem right. Uh, I know that you're not supposed to do that. So I thought, well, maybe it's just uh, the Milwaukee's not big enough or something, so let's try an old cheap uh, one from Ryobi with a bigger battery, but it's not any more powerful. And let's see if, we, if that'll drill. And actually, I wonder why the Milwaukee, I guess the Milwaukee's got a safety feature in it to shut off with too much torque, but the Ryobi here doesn't but you can break your arm. So anyway, because uh, it's catching a lot of torque there, versus see if I can get it out. So I didn't find that that worked. So here's my tip. You're gonna want a really decent corded drill in, in your shop. Um, this is a DeWalt corded. Somebody asked me the other day, what in the world is that black thing hanging on the end of that device? <laughs> like, okay, that is an electrical cord. You don't, you got, I know in this battery operated world, you don't see that much, but I love this puppy. And uh, that was interesting that the uh, Ryobi drill was gonna continue to work there even though is going to catch. So now I'm going to try this big corded power variable speed 
super duper drill. And again, maybe I'm looking for uh, advice here. You guys would say, well, of course, dummy, didn't you know that? Well, that's why I publish some of these videos so I can learn something. This is just what I call fooling around Sunday, so it doesn't much matter. And this won't be a very long one today. So here we go. How does this perform? Cut like butter. <coughs> very smooth, very good. Still, if I'm going to use this drill, I would prefer to use my wood owl uh, uh, auger bit instead of this speed bore, but it looks like they both work. And uh, it just goes through till the uh, little perforated or the, the threaded tip breaks through and then it stops pulling down. And as long as you're not pushing down, then it'll stop there. You'll get a hole in the bottom, and you won't get breakout. So pretty cool. Let me get it out of there. So the tip is invest in a really good variable speed corded drill. I highly recommend this one from DeWalt. Uh, what model is it? Heck, I don't know, and I don't have my glasses on. Careful. Careful there, dude. Careful. DWD-220. Uh, VSR drill. Love it. That's it for today. Just fooling around on a Sunday, having a little fun in my shop. Thought I'd jump on, share a little video. You guys stay, I got to learn not to look at the monitor, but look at the camera. So <clears throat> anyway, the pop-up workbench is coming. I'm getting there. I've finished all of the plans, got them ready to publish. I just need to work out the logistics of getting it available on my website and having usernames and passwords so people can go there and uh, order it in some method and then get it delivered to their email. and. Uh, the only other thing I'm working on it now is to try to figure out how to maybe put it on a mobile base <clears throat> so it can be moved around really, really easily to the carport, to the driveway, to wherever. Because it's really not thought of when you've got a real workshop and you've already got your uh, super flat, super heavy duty uh, real workbench, then this is not designed for that kind of a workshop. Although I like it, you know, I like having it here. It's, with all my uh, match fit dovetail grooves in it, I've got some advantages. This is just the smaller top. I've got the larger top back here. So uh, anyway, it's uh, going to be available one of these days. Be safe in your workshop. Have a super sound day and uh, go spend some time with your kids and your family. See you later. <laughs>